in cars, number 145. <laughs> Who was here on the first one? Anybody still alive? <laughs> anyway, um, I'm Jay Biddle. Welcome to uh, our humble world here. Hope you've had a good time. Uh, if you want to circle up towards the uh, dock here, we're going to do a Veterans Day uh, little recognition in a few minutes. And uh, and then after that, we, we we're going to welcome the eBay Motors folks who were kind enough to come, and hopefully you've all visited with them. They've got some really neat marketing stuff going on. And then at the end, after the ceremony, we'll be having an engine, a 440 big block Chrysler and the dyno in the back. Everybody's invited to watch that. So everybody come on up, and we'll be getting started here in a minute. Anybody wants to know who that was? That was Texas A&M's Aggie Band <laughs> at our nation's capital for the inaugural ball. So anyway, um, yeah, everybody come on down, get, get up close. Um, feel free to filter in here. Um, we're going to start off with um, a invocation. I have uh, Keith Shuley here, who's uh, been a JBA client, customer, friend, and family member for decade plus, and uh, I'm going to turn this over to Keith to get us started. Pastor. Thanks, Jay. Honorably discharged Sergeant of uh, Marines, uh, Commander Chaplain Corps of the United States Navy, retired, currently contract priest uh, at Naval Base San Diego off 32nd Street, Harbor Drive. Let us pray. Lord, we celebrate nation friendship, the automobile hobby, the industry, and the creative spirit that makes America so special. And we give you thanks for Jay, his love for our nation, his sincere friendship, his hospitality, his vision in an industry and a hobby that means so much to all of us that are gathered here today. We remember our service members who are on deployment land, sea, air, under the sea. We remember our isolated duty service members. We remember those on remote assignments. And we remember as they hold the line, defend our freedom and protect our nation. And in a special way, Lord, continue to be kind to the fallen comrades in their eternal life. They paid the ultimate price for us from our battle for independence to our battle against terror and all the critical events throughout which they had sustained us and now sustain us from their place in heaven. Help us to know that the joy we experience, the freedom we love is made possible by those who quietly and without fanfare stand the watch. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you, Keith. Um, Dennis De La Sente is uh, Mustang Club uh, President Emeritus and uh, Marine Aviator and uh, long-term JBA family and friend. Come on up, Dennis. Turn it over to you. All right, they'll never let the chaplain go first. They steal everything you're about to say. But what I did want to comment on, please, are the 
individuals that are currently deployed on the edge of danger so that we neither have to think about danger or experience that danger. We are able to sleep peacefully at night because there are men and women deployed across the globe that are willing to do violence upon those that would harm us. And so I need to acknowledge two groups today because the car community understands this. The nation throws us a bone once a year on Veterans Day. But I'd like the first group, active duty military. Could you please raise your hands? Active duty military. There's a young individual in the back there. Thank you very much. There's another couple over here. They're very humble. They're not going to acknowledge themselves. And the second group I'd like to acknowledge, please, are veterans. All the vets in the crowd, please raise your hand. And when you meet these individuals today, don't only thank them for their service, thank them for their sacrifices. The numerous holidays they missed, the family occasions, there's quite a few individuals on government entitlement programs because they can't even live here in San Diego County without assistance from the government. These are the sacrifices they make on a daily basis that are, trans, uh, that are unidentified or rarely acknowledged by society. So thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. Thank the car club community because folks like Jay and like you all will come around when I go to a volunteer organization that works with wounded warriors, and I'm wearing the hat of one of them, Homes for Our Troops, the people that get it are the car club demographics. When you think about it, the folks that raised their hand, that first group, they're one percenters. One percent of the individuals in this nation are serving in the military. The 99% of us are riding on their backs. So thank them on occasion when you run into them for their service as well as their sacrifice. And thank Jay for the numerous wounded warriors that he has helped here with uh, various repairs and such on their vehicles and the many individuals that you have supported in the various car clubs that have had those uh, vehicles restored with your love, help, and care. Thank you. Very much, uh, Dennis Blue F4 Phantoms. Uh, he's very uh, proud and humble man himself. So I was trying to get him to tell a story. Um, and I've got other friends back in the background here, but I got to tell you about stories because my dad was a veteran, and um, I got a chance to introduce him to Larry Yarum, and I'm going to invite Larry up. Uh, Larry was not kind enough to go over to v, the v, um, the veterans group that my dad was part, were part of uh, with the Mount Soledad Cross. Who's been on the Soledad Mountain and seen the war memorial up there of our great service, service folks? So Larry uh, came over to La Jolla and uh, sat with uh, his, um, his group and told some stories that uh, just had them you know, really set back. Of course, they were World War II and, and Korean War guys. So I'm going to invite Larry to come up and tell a brief story about a MIG. Because what we don't know is what these folks do. And so I think it's really cool to share, be as humble as they are, to share something about what they do when they're alone against the forces of evil. Larry? About five minutes ago, he says, can you tell a war story? <laughs> he doesn't know what he asked for. Anyway, well, I was an uh, A-6 driver, uh, all-weather, low-level fighter bomber. Uh, it was designed after Korea when they couldn't fly in bad weather. Consequently, we flew a lot bad weather and a lot at night, uh, and a lot of single, single plane. The aircraft was amazing. We could mine, and we mined Haiphong Harbor shot. Uh, we low level, we could fight the uh, SAMs. We had the ability to uh, kill a SAM and fly very low and drop a lot of bombs. 
And one of the things, uh, one of our missions, I was on Kitty Hawk 72, and one of our missions was after we mined Haiphong Harbor shut, most of the weapons from North Vietnam were from, uh, from uh, China on what was called the Northeast Rail Line down to uh, Hanoi. And so we would be sent out at night, low level, you had to be uh, below the sand level, and uh, truck along into the rough terrain, mountainous terrain, and then turn towards Hanoi and try to detect any movers, trucks, trains, anything like that, and drop on them. And if you didn't find any movers, then you turned towards uh, Cap, which was the big base, uh, the bad guys, and uh, go there and knock out their SAMs, or even if uh, you got through the SAMs, uh, their runways. So one night I'm trucking along and driving in and turned down, headed for Hanoi, nothing in Hanoi, so turned up to go to Cap. And uh, dropped in Cap, we had two SAMs sh shot at us, dropped at Cap, and now headed home and still low level, trucking along, and my e -Lent says, you got a MIG on your tail. And I called the, uh, the uh, airborne E-2 and said, hey, and he says, we've got it, we're sending an F-4 in. And I'm low level, and he's really buzzed me, and my comment was, time to hurry! <laughs> I don't remember that particular call. Uh, the uh, long story is the uh, F-4 came in and broke the MIG off and uh, he didn't even have a chance to shoot at me. So got home, got back to the carrier and uh, they played the tape with the Admiral. And I'm sitting there fat, dumb and happy. And uh, yeah, we talked about that and then a radio call here and then, and then what was that? He says, Tell him to hurry? <laughs> what the hell do you think he was going to do? <laughs> and not only that, but from then on, everybody has call signs, right? And you know, uh, uh, you somehow earn it or, or you're awarded that or whatever. Well, I had a call sign, but it soon after that became, Hey, tell him to hurry, let's go fly him. <laughs> That's my horror story. <laughs> yeah, he can, and he has some great videos, and he shared those with us, and uh, we appreciate your service so much. And everyone that's here, I, I want to recognize my buddy James Murphy over here. Everybody wave to James. That's his GTO, right from JBA. Now, the story of his GTO is that his aunt drove that original GTO to work. Uh, on um, 32nd Street, and he pulled the car uh, out of her driveway, brought it over here. I don't know, I guess it was probably six, seven years ago. And uh, we completely. He towed it. He towed it here. <laughs> and uh, it's been painted, restored, and it's the fastest GTO in the town. So if you want to race for pinks, James, go see James. <laughs> Sorry, James, I, don't, I know you're humble. <laughs> oh, let's see, and I've got. Uh, who else is here? Uh, John Fernandez, where's John? Hey, wave, John's my friend uh, Gomez, that's his handle, F-18 jockey, and uh, that's his Panzer Kampfwagen over in the back, the GT3 Porsche. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, John, for your service. Um, and then I've got Shannon Brown here, uh, Bill Baugh, you guys are so amazing. Where's Shannon? Is Shannon waving at me somewhere? Uh, Anyway, so many great guys that are active duty, that uh, love our hobby, and um, I just appreciate you guys so much. And uh, the retired guys that come in here and straighten me out all the time, you know, that's the way it is. You've got to be humble to them. And of course, Tom Hufford, another F4 jockey from Vietnam. Tom, can you come out front and let everybody wave at you? Everybody give Tom with his 427 Cobra. Tom, you want to come up and tell a story of, uh, no? Well, anyway, that Cobra he bought on the way to Vietnam. <laughs> he told, he had a trailer behind it. Uh, so that was, any, any you know, who, who would believe that he would save it this long? But we appreciate you bringing that million dollar car out every day, Tom, every time. Let's give Tom a hand. Um, hey, can anybody, Drew, is Austin in there? Yeah, he's on.
Daddy Tell him to bring the baby out. Everybody wants to see him. All right, so my grandson's here for the first coffee and cars that he got here early. His name's Denton James, and I'm going to try to force my son to bring him out and hold him up. But uh, at least we got, you know, we got Austin here, uh, so the next generation of uh, JBA is being developed. And uh, you know what I like about Denton is uh, he doesn't jump when you start a loud car, and you can put headphones on him and uh, put him in a race car, and he'll grab the steering wheel and go... <laughs> so anyway, if, uh, Austin will bring them out. Also, we're getting ready to fire up the engine dyno in the back. We're going to invite everybody uh, to go in the back of the shop and see uh, big 440 Chrysler running uh, on the engine dyno. And then, uh, do I have one of the guys from eBay? Oh, there's Dennis. Yeah. All right, here's Denton James, everybody. Hi, <laughs> Denton. Denton is five months old, and uh, you know it's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> so he has a JBA patch on the back of his coat, just so you know. So anyway, another Ford man is born, or whatever. As long as he's a car guy, right? Yeah. Um, eBay Motors. Uh, again, we want to thank them for coming out. And hopefully you guys, have everybody's had a chance to come over, they've got some really exciting things that they're promoting. And we heard from them on Thursday. They said, hey, we're going to be in town. Can we show up? And I said, sure. So we appreciate them. And uh, that blue cougar in here just sold on eBay Motors. It's going to Rhode Island for $151,000. Okay, it was on eBay Motors for one week, just so you know. And it wasn't auctioned. It was just in their car place. I don't think they know that. So uh, anyway, it's pretty exciting. And uh, so I do believe in eBay Motors, and I wouldn't have them here if I didn't believe in them. Thanks again for everybody. We'll put some rock and roll on and uh, go check out the dyno. And we'll be doing burnouts here in a little bit. Thanks for coming out today.
He's got to clear before we start the next one. Going, Tom. Oh, okay. Nice knowing you. <laughs> Do you need some earplugs? Oh, yeah. No, I asked her if she needed some. Oh, okay. <laughs>
Chinese. <laughs> I love it.